you are part of this iconic picture mm. uh, in the Situation Room with President Obama, uh, uh, Vice President Biden, Hillary Clinton, uh, at the very moment that uh, Navy SEALs terminate mm -hmm. Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. um, yet, not much later, uh, or at that time, mm -hmm. there was the Syria crisis, mm -hmm. uh, ISIS, and the government, mm -hmm. President Obama then decided mm -hmm. basically not to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, while at this moment, more and more people have the idea that ISIS is even a greater threat mm -hmm. to the world of freedom than um, than Al Qaeda, mm -hmm. definitely at the time that that uh, Bin Laden was terminated. Why? Mm -hmm. What's what happened? Well, it's a long answer, but I'll try to make it. Uh, I'll try to make it short. First, you have to distinguish between the fight against uh, Daesh or the Islamic State, uh, whatever you want to call it, and the civil war that's now um, ripping Syria apart and has been for the last six years. The fight against the Islamic State is actually going well. Uh, based on the strategy that was implemented, conceived and implemented by the Obama administration, and that is trying to destroy Daesh at its core in Iraq and Syria, to take away the physical caliphate that it's tried to declare, which has been a place that then physically uh, attracts foreign fighters, allows it to exploit resources, and then uh, in a less uh, literal sense, figuratively, gives it a story, a narrative that's very attractive. Uh, we're on the verge of taking away that self-declared caliphate in Mosul uh, and also in Raqqa uh, in Syria. And then you still have to deal with its manifestations in different parts of the world, the fact that it inspires individuals. But uh, I think we're on a positive course in terms of dealing with that problem. The same cannot be said for the civil war in Syria. And of course the two are connected, because as long as Assad remains in, para in, in power and as long as um, Syria remains torn apart, it will uh, be a place where there's a vacuum and it will be a place that attracts extremists. So they'll continue to some extent to fuel uh, Daesh. Uh, the, anyone who had any responsibility for, for a policy, uh, myself included, with regard to Syria, um, has to accept uh, the reality that we did not succeed uh, and that on our watch uh, many, many, many people suffered. And that's something that we'll have to contend with for uh, those of us who are involved for the rest of our lives. I think there's plenty of blame to go around, starting with the Syrians themselves, starting with Iran and Russia and the other patrons of the regime, starting with all of the Arab states uh, and other neighboring states. But we have a responsibility too as a country that more than any other in the world has some ability to mobilize the international community to deal with these problems. Um, I think there are lots of reasons that one could give uh, for why we have to date not been successful. Certainly the overhang of the Iraq war uh, weighed heavily in a desire not to have American forces uh, bogged down in a country, uh, hundreds of thousands, for years at a time. Uh, the uh, difficult intervention in Libya, which succeeded in getting rid of Gaddafi, but did not succeed in avoiding uh, a vacuum after Gaddafi's departure, that's actually proved to be, unfortunately, a place for uh, uh, extremists and terrorists to go to, that too uh, weighs on it. But the bottom line is that when you look at the history of civil wars, they tend to end in one of three ways. First, one side wins. But in the case of Syria, that's not happened because whenever one side has gotten the advantage, the patrons from the outside of the other side have come in and supported it, and it's rebalanced things to some extent. Second, the parties fight to exhaustion. But at least according to historical studies, that takes 10 years on average when there are just two parties involved, and many more years when there are a multiplicity of parties involved. Syria is just entering its seventh year. So that suggests that exhaustion may not be around the corner. The third way is some kind of outside intervention, some combination of military, political, diplomatic intervention. That's what we've been trying to do, trying to get everyone on the same page among the outside patrons to try to bring this uh, to an end by using their influence with actors inside of Syria. But the interests are so dispersed and so different among the different actors inside and outside of Syria, that that's proved to be a very challenging uh, process. That's where we are. It is not satisfying in the least, to the contrary. Uh, it's usually uh, frustrating, um, and it's um, something that weighs on anyone who had any responsibility uh, for Syria. I hope that the Trump administration can now uh, use its uh, uh, best efforts to try to continue this process and bring the, the civil war to an end. 